Hi, and welcome to the second episode of our series in which we present Agent Force Vibes. My name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In the previous episode, we introduced the concept of enterprise vibe coding and the technologies that support it. In this episode, we'll get you started with Agent Force Vibes, your one stop shop for enterprise vibe coding on the Salesforce platform. You'll learn about the different components of the solution. We'll cover the MCP server configuration. We'll finish with vibe coding in a first set of prompts. Agent Force Vibes is composed of two main components. An IDE, either VS Code installed on your machine or our browser-based Agent Force Vibes IDE, previously known as Code Builder. And the Agent Force Vibes extension, What's great with Azure Force Vibes IDE is that it holds everything you need and it's native to your org. It automatically authenticates and connects to your org upon launch. And if needed, it can connect to other orgs as well. Let's now talk about Azure Force Vibes extensions. This is where you'll get started with enterprise vibe coding. You'll spend most of your time working with prompts, but before we jump into this, let me cover the key views from a high level perspective. There's the context menu that you can use for prompting, the MCP servers panel, and the rules and workflows panel. We won't go into details about rules and workflow in this episode, as there will be a dedicated episode in the series, but think of those as a way to provide reusable instructions that ground the agent. For now, we're going to focus on the MCP servers. We saw in the first episode that pipe coding is supported by MCP and Agent Force Vibes is no exception. In this panel, you can see the list of MCP servers. Agent Force Vibes comes with the Salesforce DX MCP server pre-configured and you can install additional servers. We'll cover the third-party MCP servers later in the series, but the Salesforce DX server contains more than 60 tools that you can use to get started. These include metadata and data management, test operations, security and performance reviews, and much more. From here, you can take a look at the active MCP tools. Note that I've enabled all of the tools for the sake of the demo. In practice, you'll never work with everything enabled at the same time. You'll want to be selective and limit the number of active tools to help the agent pick the right ones. Let's see how you can do this. I'm going to configure our MCP server. This is a JSON file that holds the configuration of our MCP servers. For now, there's only one server, and that's the Salesforce DX MCP server. The server configuration and the tools that it contains are documented in this GitHub repository. We're going to look at it, but before we do so, let me just explain the configuration from a high level. Here, we have a list of tools that are automatically enabled. By default, the agent asks you to approve each time it uses a tool unless you auto-approve it first. Here, you can see that I've auto-approved a number of tools that are safe to use as these are read-only. Be careful when auto-approving tools that can modify data or metadata. Then, further down, you can see the server configuration. The important part here are the flags that are passed to the server. This is what you'll fine tune to get the most out of Agent Force Vibes. Let's take a look at the documentation to see what those flags are. Orgs let you control which tools can be accessed by the tools. This is either all orgs, the current default org, the dev hub, or a specific org. Tool sets and tools let you control which tools can be enabled. Tools are grouped into tool set for easy configuration, but you can also handpick individual tools. Then you can also opt in to enable non-GA tools by adding this flag. Going back to tool sets and tools, the full list is documented in this section of the GitHub repository. In the next episodes of this series, we'll cover examples of some of these tools, but for now, we'll start with something simple. Now that we've configured our tools, let's run some simple prompts to see how the dev agent behaves. There are two modes available for running prompts, plan mode and act mode. Plan mode lists a set of actions that the agent would take to answer your prompt without executing them. You can see 
that the agent asks for more detail to refine the plan, it may also propose variants and you can iterate on the instructions before taking action. Act mode allows the agent to execute a plan if one was prepared earlier or directly execute the user's prompt as they are submitted. Here you can see how it runs my plan. As the plan runs, you can see checkpoints. These allow you to roll back the agent changes if needed. And if everything goes well, you end up with your app implemented in a matter of minutes. That's the power of VAP coding. From there, you can of course iterate to deploy and run tests and other tools, but we'll save that for later. That's it for today. You've learned about the different components of AgentForce Vibes. You've learned how to configure the Salesforce DX MCP server, and you saw how to start with Vibe coding. In the next episode of the series, we'll talk about rules and workflows. We'll explore how to ground the agent with reusable instructions. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this content useful. Make sure to like this video and to subscribe to our channel to get notified when we release more content like this. And see you in the next episode.